Hey, morning. Many of you may know me from my last video and other videos that I put out, not warning you, but this previous one warned you that in July, something major is going to happen in the world, likely a food crisis. However, I do have uh, other ideas and I'm not gonna put them out into the world because uh, I feel that what's going to happen is going to contribute to the food crisis that's already happening. Um, yeah, anyway, this video is to link together some dots for you because in my first video I brought up the Space Force and to me the Space Force is a big thing because uh, <clears throat> many of you may know or the people who do know me know that in grade two or three in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, I was lucky enough to see a cigar shaped craft that was literally no higher off the ground than the tallest skyscraper. I could see definition in the metal. I could tell just by looking at it that it was not from this world. It was not our technology. Uh, although a child, I had seen several planes. We lived by the airport. Seen many helicopters, seen many air balloons. Never seen anything like this in my life. Uh, not to date. I've seen lights in the sky that I can only imagine our ships, but I didn't need to imagine this. <laughs> and it still affects me, as you can tell by the uh, emotion in my voice. <clears throat> but that isn't what this video is about. We're going to do a connect the dots. One of my favorite inventors in history is Nikola Tesla. He was born July 9th, 10th in 1856 in what is now Croatia, uh, otherwise known as Serbia back then. Uh, his family was Serbian born. He was born during a lightning storm and uh, he lived quite some time. He died January 7th, 1943 in the New Yorker Hotel. Um, a lot of people don't know he was uh, <clears throat> always interested in electricity. Even as a child, he did experiments with electricity. Um, he used to scare his mother a little bit with how inventive he was. But uh, yeah, that's something you can look into. I hope you do. I'm going to talk to you about his death and how it connects the dots with our present world and Space Force. Oddly enough, so, we all know he was staying in the New Yorker for the last several years of his life. He was staying there because they had their own electricity supply. It was, it could basically power New York City. Um, so he was able to perform his high energy experiments without any worry of having the powers, uh, uh, power knocked out, you know, uh, and I apologize uh, if I don't use the correct terms, but, uh, yeah, he, he just didn't want to black out and have his experiments fail. And by staying at the New Yorker, uh, they allowed him access to their electricity um, uh, supply, which was strictly for the hotel. And uh, he made the best of it. The last um, couple of years of his life, he became strictly paranoid, very paranoid. Um, he, he, he was very open that many of his ideas, if not all of them, were communicated to him from uh, uh, other entities, not of this world, uh, possibly from Mars. Um, and everybody really thought he was going crazy. In fact, he thought that he was being surveyed, surveilled, sorry, the last couple of years of his life. And uh, it turned out to be true. A lot of people don't know this. So he died in the New Yorker, and this comes firsthand from the bellman at the time, head bellman, who uh, let people into his room before police. And this has to do with the missing trunks. So Nikola Tesla claimed he had 80 trunks on his death. Um, when they were actually uh, taken in the hotel and turned over to his family and... and, and um, basically seized by the FBI, uh, uh, there was much less than 80 trunks reported. And there's been this conspiracy going on that uh, they've been missing, and for good reason, because they had fantastic inventions and technologies that were beneficial to the military. 
uh, for for military purposes, and, and it's very true, which is very odd because you know Nikola Tesla, he he wanted to give free electricity to the world, which is awesome, which is shame on you, Elon Musk, because uh, you guys got a namesake car to him, and you you charge an outrageous price for it. Tesla would roll over in his grave and shoot you with electricity. I tell you that. Anyway. <clears throat> The Bellman says that he let two individuals in, one, one military individual, and he said that the guy who actually identified himself to have the door open was in fact none other than Dr. John G. Trump. He's the youngest brother of Trump's father, and three weeks after Nikola Tesla's death, John Trump was given task to declare if any of the Tesla's ideas um, basically had any uh, quote-unquote significant value and his analysis was was primarily of a he said that this uh, Tesla's work was primarily of a speculative philosophical and promotional character and said the papers did not include uh, new sound workable principles or methods for realizing such results <laughs> uh, yeah right uh, this brilliant man, all those ideas, they were just bullshit. Uh, I smell bullshit, but it came out of your mouth, Trump. Not the only Trump that speaks a lot of shit, though, right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, he went on. Uh, he, he was head of research at MIT. And remember, they said that he was tasked three weeks after his death to look at the trunks. However, the head bellman at the New Yorker, who still affiliated with that hotel <laughs> is positive that Trump was the very first one in the room after Tesla's death. Trump's uncle. Okay. Uh, his uncle went on and he helped design x-ray research machines that helped cancer and worked uh, on radar research during World War II. Um, I don't need to tell you that uh, that was stuff that Tesla was interested in and likely had in his papers. <laughs> uh, Trump's report was used by the FBI to determine Tesla's inventions of a death ray it didn't exist. However, a military group at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base had a very different opinion and totally believed that it was possible. I'm 100% positive that it was possible because we've seen examples of proton uh, beams, laser beams, all sorts of uh, death rays that they've come up with. And in fact, there's a program called UFO Witness. <laughs> Season one, episode three, look it up. They show a fantastic picture of a wonderful beam of light shooting into space from none other than a military base. <laughs> Odd, eh? Sort of stuff Tesla was working on. So how does this connect to Space Force? Well, who the hell told us that Space Force was a thing? Trump. Hmm. Trump's uncle sees Tesla's documents. Tesla was firmly believing that aliens gave him the technology and advancement that he needed in order to help the world. Trump himself says, I don't believe in aliens. I, I, don't, I don't believe in UFOs. Bullshit. <laughs> That's why you guys started Space Force. You know damn well that Nikola Tesla's work was 100% right, and you all should be ashamed of yourself. Connect the dots. It's so odd that Trump's uncle is the first one into Tesla's room. Three weeks later, tasked by the FBI themselves to go through his papers and establish the validity of his inventions and to find out whether or not there was anything missing that they could use. And then years later, Trump, the nephew, announces Space Force. Crazy. Look into it, do your research, check it out. I'm James, let me know what you think. Leave your comments in the bottom. Tesla, fantastic man. Once again, Elon Musk, I love you. You know, your, your head's in the right place, but give it a shake. Tesla would be ashamed of you. Take care.